Georges Jacques Danton was a leading figure in the early stages of the French Revolution and the first president of the Committee of Public Safety. Danton's role in the onset of the revolution has been disputed. Many historians describe him as the chief force in the overthrow of the monarchy and the establishment of the First French Republic. A moderating influence on the Jacobins, he was guillotined by the advocates of revolutionary terror after accusations of venality and leniency to the enemies of the revolution. Early life and the revolution, Danton was born in Arcy sur orbe in northeastern France to Jacques Danton and Mary Camus, Brittany from a respectable, but not a wealthy family. After obtaining a good education he became an advocate in Paris. He married Antoinette Charpentier in 1787. They had three sons. She died February 10, 1793, whereupon Danton married Louise Tsar copyright Bastien Gar copyrightly, aged 16, daughter of Marc Antoine Gar copyrightly, who is your audience here at the Parlement de Paris and member of the Club des Cordeliers. She looked after his two surviving sons. Danton's first appearance in the Revolution was as president of the Cordeliers Club, whose name derives from the former convent of the Order of Cordeliers, where it held its meetings. One of many clubs important in the early phases of the Revolution, the Cordeliers was a center for the popular principle, that France was to be a country of its people under popular sovereignty. They were the earliest to accuse the royal court of being irreconcilably hostile to freedom and they most vehemently proclaimed the need for radical action. In June 1791, the king and the queen made a disastrous attempt to flee from the capital. They were forced to return to the Tuileries Palace, which effectively became their prison. The popular reaction was intense, and those who favored a constitutional monarchy, of whom the leader was Lafayette, became excited. A bloody dispersion of a popular gathering, known as the Massacre of the Champ de Mars kindled resentment against the court and the constitutional party. Danton was, in part, behind the crowd that gathered, and fearing counter-revolutionary backlash, he fled to England for the rest of the summer. The National Constituent Assembly completed its work in September 1791. Danton was not elected to its successor, the short-lived Legislative Assembly, and his party was only able to procure for him a subordinate post in the Paris Commune. In April 1792, the Girondist government a Euro still functioning as a constitutional monarch a Euro declared war against Austria. A country in turmoil from the immense civil and political changes of the past two years now faced war with an enemy on its eastern frontier. Parisian distrust for the court turned to open insurrection. On August 10, 1792, the popular forces marched on the Tuileries. The king and queen took refuge with the Legislative Assembly. Danton's role in this uprising is unclear. He may have been at its head. This view is supported because on the morning after the effective fall of the monarchy, Danton became Minister of Justice. This sudden rise from the subordinate office which he held in the Commune is a demonstration of his power within the insurrectionary party. Rise in the provisional executive government that was formed between the king's dethronement and the opening of the National Assembly, Danton found himself allied with Jean-Marie Roland and other members of the Girondist movement. Their strength was soon put to the test. The alarming successes of the Austrians and the surrender of two important fortresses caused panic in the capital. Over a thousand prisoners were murdered. At that time, Danton was accused of directing these September massacres, but no evidence of this is available from modern research. However, he apparently did insist that his colleagues should remain firm at their posts. The election to the National Convention took place in September 1792, after which the remnant of the Legislative Assembly formally surrendered its authority. The Convention ruled France until October 1795. Danton was a member. Resigning as Minister of Justice, he took a prominent part in the deliberations and proceedings of the convention. In the convention, according to the 1911 Encyclopaedia Britannica, 11th edition, he took his seat in the high and remote benches which gave the name of the mountain to the revolutionists who sat there. He found himself side by side with Marat, whose exaggerations he never countenanced. With Maximilien Robespierre, whom he did not regard very highly, but whose immediate aims were in many respects his own. 
with Camille Desmoulins and Filippo, who were his close friends and constant partisans. As for his foes, the Girondists, they were eloquent, dazzling, patriotic, but unable to apprehend the fearful nature of the crisis too full of vanity and exclusive party spirit, and too fastidious to strike hands with the vigorous and stormy Danton. Dreading the people who had elected Danton, and holding Danton responsible for the September massacres, they failed to see that his sympathy with the vehemence and energy of the streets positioned him uniquely to harness on behalf of the defense of France that insurrectionary spirit that had removed the monarchy. Danton saw radical Paris as the only force to which the National Convention could look in resisting Austria and its allies on the northeast frontier, and the reactionaries in the interior. Paris, he said, is the natural and constituted center of free France. It is the center of light. When Paris shall perish there will no longer be a republic. Danton voted for the death of Louis XVI in January 1793. After the execution had been carried out, he thundered the kings of Europe would dare challenge us. We'd throw them the head of a king. Danton had a conspicuous share in the creation of the Revolutionary Tribunal, which on the one hand took the weapons away from the disorderly popular vengeance of the September massacres, but which would become the instrument of the institutionalized terror. When all executive power was conferred upon a committee of public safety, Danton had been one of the nine original members of that body. He was dispatched on frequent missions from the convention to the Republican armies in Belgium, and wherever he went he infused new energy into the army. He pressed forward the new national system of education, and he was one of the legislative committee charged with the construction of a new system of government. He tried and failed to bridge the hostilities between Girondists and Jacobins. The Girondists were irreconcilable, and the fury of their attacks on Danton in the mountain was unremitting. Fall of the Girondists, although he was a Euro again in the words of the 1911 Britannica Euro far too robust in character to lose himself in merely personal enmities, by the middle of May 1793 Danton had made up his mind that the Girondists must be politically suppressed. The convention was wasting time and force and vindictive factional recriminations, while the country was in crisis. Charles Frenet Section Noir de Maurice, the senior commander of the battles of Valmy and G. Maps, had deserted. The French armies were suffering a series of checks and reverses. A royalist rebellion was gaining formidable dimensions in the West. The Girondists were clamoring for the heads of Danton and his colleagues in the mountain, but they would lose this struggle to the death. There is no positive evidence that Danton directly instigated the insurrection of May 31 to Euro June 2, 1793, which ended in the purge of the convention and the prescription of the Girondists. He afterwards spoke of himself as in some sense the author of this revolution, because a little while before, stung by some trait of factious perversity in the Girondists, he had openly cried out in the midst of the convention, that if he could only find a hundred men, they would resist the oppressive authority of the Girondist Commission of Twelve. At any rate, he certainly acquiesced in the violence of the Commune, and he publicly gloried in the expulsion of the men who stood obstinately in the way of a vigorous and concentrated exertion of national power. Danton, unlike the Girondists, accepted the fury of popular passion as an inevitable incident in the work of deliverance. He was not an enthusiast of the reign of terror like Bill Aldvarin or Jacques Rena copyright ha copyright Bert. He saw it as a two-edged weapon to be used as little as necessary. The authors of the 1911 Britannica see him at this time as wishing to reconcile France with herself. To restore a society that, while emancipated and renewed in every part, should yet be stable. And above all to secure the independence of his country both by a resolute defense against the invader, and by such a mixture of vigor with humanity as should reconcile the offended opinion of the rest of Europe. The position of the mountain had completely changed. In the Constituent Assembly its members had been a mere thirty out of the 578 of the Third Estate. In the Legislative Assembly they had not been numerous, and none of their chiefs held a seat. In the first nine months of the convention they were struggling for their very lives against the Girondists. In June 1793, for the first time, they found themselves in possession of absolute power. Men who had for many months been nourished on the ideas and stirred to the methods of opposition, 
1911 Britannica suddenly had the responsibility of government. Actual power was in the hands of the Committee of Public Safety and the Committee of General Security. Both were chosen out of the body of the convention. The drama of the nine months between the expulsion of the Girondins and the execution of Danton turns upon the struggle of the committees to retain power, first, against the insurrectionary municipal government of Paris, the Commune, and second, against the convention, from which the committees derived an authority that was regularly renewed on the expiry of each short term. Danton, immediately after the fall of the Girondists, had thrown himself with extraordinary energy into the work to be done. He was prominent in the task of setting up a strong central authority, taming the anarchical ferment of Paris. It was he who proposed that the Committee of Public Safety be granted dictatorial powers, and that it should have copious funds at its disposal. He was not a member of the resulting committee, in order to keep himself clear of any personal suspicion, he announced his resolution not to belong to the body which he had thus done his best to make supreme in the state. His position during the autumn of 1793 was that of a powerful supporter and inspirer, from without, of the government which he had been foremost in setting up. Danton in the Reign of Terror, the French National Convention during the autumn of 1793 began to assert its authority further throughout France, creating the bloodiest period of the French Revolution in which some historians assert approximately 40,000 people were killed in France. Following the fall of the Girondins, a group known as the Indulgence would emerge from amongst the Montafnards as the legislative right within the convention and Danton as their most vocal leader. Having long supported the progressive acts of the Committee of Public Safety, Danton would begin to propose that the committee retract legislation instituting terror as a euro or with order of the day a euro while the Committee of Public Safety was concerned with strengthening the centralist policies of the convention. Danton was in the process of devising a plan that would effectively move popular sentiment among delegates towards a more moderate stance. This meant adopting values popular among the sans culotte, notably the control of bread prices that had seen drastic increase with the famine that was being experienced throughout France. Danton also proposed that the convention begin taking actions towards peace with foreign powers, as the committee had declared war on the majority of European powers, such as England. Spain, and Portugal. The reign of terror was not a policy that could be easily transformed. Indeed, it would eventually end with the Thermidorian reaction, when the convention rose against the committee, executed its leaders, and placed power in the hands of new men with a new policy. But in German a Euro that is, in March 1794 a Euro feeling was not right. The committees were still too strong to be overthrown, and Danton, heedless, instead of striking with vigor in the convention, waited to be struck. In these later days, writes the 1911 Britannica, a certain discouragement seems to have come over his spirit. His wife had died during his absence on one of his expeditions to the armies. He had her body exhumed so as to see her again. Despite genuine grief, Danton quickly married again, and, the Britannica continues. The rumor went that he was allowing domestic happiness to tempt him from the keen incessant vigilance proper to the politician in such a crisis. Ultimately, Danton himself would become a victim of the terror. As he attempted to shift the direction of the revolution, by collaborating with Camille Desmoulins through the production of the Old Cordelia, a newspaper that called for the end of the official terror and dechristianization, as well as launching new peace overtures to France's enemies, those who most closely associated themselves with the Committee of Public Safety, among them key figures such as Maximilien Robespierre and Georges Couthon, would search for any reason to indict Danton for counter-revolutionary activities. These actions would lead to an investigation of Danton a Euro unregistered trademark s revolutionary vigor, and in the end he would be tried and executed for his shady dealings with foreign countries in the interest of filling his own pockets financial corruption and accusations, toward the end of the reign of terror, Danton was accused of various financial misdeeds, as well as using his position within the revolution for personal gain. Many of his contemporaries commented on Danton's financial success during the revolution, certain acquisitions of money that he could not adequately explain. Many of the specific accusations directed against him were based on insubstantial or ambiguous evidence. 
Between 1791 and 1793 Danton faced many allegations, including taking bribes during the insurrection of August 1792, helping his secretaries to line their pockets, and forging assignats during his mission to Belgium. Perhaps the most compelling evidence of financial corruption was a letter from Mirabeau to Danton in March 1791 that casually referred to 30,000 livres that Danton had received in payment. During his tenure on the Committee of Public Safety, Danton organized a peace treaty agreement with Sweden. Although the Swedish government never ratified the treaty, on June 28, 1793 the convention voted to pay 4 million livres to the Swedish regent for diplomatic negotiations. According to Bertrand Barrery, a journalist and member of the convention, Danton had taken a portion of this money which was intended for the Swedish regent. Barrery Euro unregistered trademark S accusation was never supported by any form of evidence. The most serious accusation, which haunted him during his arrest and formed a chief ground for his execution, was his alleged involvement with a scheme to appropriate the wealth of the French East India Company. During the reign of the old regime the original French East India Company went bankrupt. It was later revived in 1785, backed by royal patronage. The company eventually fell under the notice of the National Convention for Profiteering during the war. The company was soon liquidated while certain members of the convention tried to push through a decree that would cause the share prices to rise before the liquidation. Discovery of the profits from this insider trading led to the blackmailing of the directors of the company to turn over half a million livres to known associates of Danton. While there was no hard evidence that Danton was involved, he was vigorously denounced by Frenna Section Wachabot, and implicated by the fact that Faber Dauer Euro unregistered trademark Atlantine, a member of the Dantonists, was implicated in the scandal. Arrest, trial, and execution on March 30, 1794, Danton, Desmoulins and others of the indulgent party were suddenly arrested. Danton displayed such vehemence before the revolutionary tribunal that his enemies feared he would gain the crowd's favor. The convention, in one of its worst fits of cowardice, assented to a proposal made by Saint Just that, if a prisoner showed want of respect for justice, the tribunal might pronounce sentence without further delay. Danton, Desmoulins, and many other actual or accused Dantonist associates were tried from April 3rd through 5th before the Revolutionary Tribunal. The trial was less criminal in nature than political, and as such unfolded in an irregular fashion. The accused were prevented from defending themselves by a decree of the National Convention. This fact, together with confusing and often incidental denunciations and threats made by Prosecutor Antoine Quentin Fouquier-Tinville towards members of the jury, helped to ensure a guilty verdict. Additionally, the accused were denied the right to have witnesses appear on their behalf, though they had submitted requests for several, including, in Desmoulins' case, Robespierre. The verdict was passed in the absence of the accused, who had been removed from the courtroom to prevent unrest among the trial's observers. Their execution was scheduled for the same day. Of the group of fifteen who were guillotined together on April 5, 1794, including Marie-Jean Ha copyright Raoul de Tsar copyright Chels, Philippe Faber d'A. Permel Glantine and Pierre Filippo, Desmoulins died third, and Danton last. Danton was at once condemned, and led, in company with fourteen others, including Camille Desmoulins, to the guillotine. I leave it all in a frightful welter, he said. Not a man of them has an idea of government. Robespierre will follow me. He is dragged down by me. Ah, better be a poor fisherman than meddle with the government of men. The phrase a poor fisherman was almost certainly a reference to St. Peter, Danton having reconciled to Catholicism. In reference to his belief that Robespierre would meet a similar fate, his last words to the crowd were, My only regret is that I am going before that rat Robespierre. Events went as Danton foresaw. The committees presently came to quarrel with the pretensions of Robespierre. Three months after Danton's execution, Robespierre and his party were deposed, and Robespierre was himself executed. His ascent to the execution of Danton had deprived him of the single great force that might have supported him against the committee. The 1911 Britannica wrote that Danton stands out as a master of commanding phrase. 
one of his fierce sayings has become a proverb. Against the Duke of Brunswick and the invaders, il now spout de laudas, a encore de laudas, a taujours de laudas a euro we need audacity, and yet more audacity, and always audacity. Throughout his life, he was referred to as Jove the Thunderer, the Rebel Satan, the Titan, and Sardna Paulus, as well as the Miribo of the Sansculottes, and Miribo of the Markets. Character Disputes George's Jacques Danton's influence and character during the French Revolution was, and still is, widely disputed amongst many historians, with the stretch of perspectives on him ranging from corrupt and violent, to generous and patriotic. Danton did not leave very much in the way of written works, personal or political, and consequently, most information about his actions and personality has been derived from second-hand sources. This inevitably has created bias and different views of Danton depending on whose interpretation is being read. One view of Danton presented by the historians Thiers and Mignet was that he was a Euro or a gigantic revolutionary Euro, with extravagant passions, a high level of intelligence, and a tolerance of violence as means to an end. It was through these qualities that he was able to manipulate the revolution as a a euro or a gamia euro, aware the French Revolution would eventually end on wanting to emerge a victor. Danton was paid by opposing factions but was never truly a euro or a buhti euro. Another perspective of Danton emerges from the work of Lamartine. Lamartine argued Danton as a man a euro e devoid of honor, principles, and morality a euro who only found excitement and a chance for distinction in the French Revolution. He was merely a Euro or a statesman of matrialism a Euro, bought anew every day. Any revolutionary moments were staged for the prospect of glory and more wealth. Yet another view of George's Jacques Danton is presented by Reinet. His examination of Danton is more positive and portrays him as a figure worthy of admiration. According to Reinet, Danton was a committed, loving, generous citizen, son, father, and husband. He remained loyal to his friends and the country of France by avoiding a Euro or a personal ambition a Euro, and gave himself wholly to the cause of keeping a Euro or with government consul I de a Euro for the Republic. He had a never-ending love for his country and the laboring masses, who he felt deserved a Euro or a dignity, consolation, and happiness a Euro fictionalized accounts, Danton, Robespierre and Marat are characters in Victor Hugo's novel, 93, set during the French Revolution. Danton was given major credit for sparking the revolution and becoming its tempering agent in the 1921 Lillian Gish film Orphans of the Storm. Danton is a central character in Romanian playwright Camel Petrescu's play of the same name. Danton's last days were made into a play, Danton's Todd, by Georg Bar 1 quarter chner. Danton appears in the Hungarian play The Tragedy of Man as one of Adam's incarnations throughout Lucifer's illusion. Danton's and Robespierre's quarrels were turned into the 1983 film Danton directed by Anzej Warder and starring Gar copyright Rad Deeper Du as Danton. The film itself is loosely based on Stanislaw Orpsa 1929 play Sprawa Dantona. Danton's and Robespierre's relations were also the subject of an opera by American composer John Eaton, Danton and Robespierre. Danton is extensively featured in Laura Copyright Volution for a section as, played by Klaus Maria Brandauer. In his novel Locus Solus, Raymond Russell tells a story in which Danton makes an arrangement with his executioner for his head to be smuggled into his friend's possession after his execution. The nerves and musculature of the head ultimately end up on display in the private collection of Marshall Cantorell, reanimated by special electrical currents and showing a deeply entrenched disposition toward oratory. Danton, Madame Roland, and Robespierre, among others, are the main characters in Marge Pierce's rendering of the French Revolution, City of Darkness, City of Light. The relationship between Danton and his wife is a central reference in Francine Prose's novella Three Pigs in Five Days. The revolution as experienced by Danton, Robespierre, and Desmoulins is the central focus of Hilary Mantel's novel A Place of Greater Safety. Danton and Camille Desmoulins are the main characters of Tanith Lee's The Gods of Thirst I Euro a novel of the French Revolution. Danton appears briefly to initiate a delicate murder investigation in Suzanne Allen's historical mystery novel Palace of Justice. 
Danton and Maximilien Robespierre are referred to in the book The Scarlet Pimpernel briefly. Danton and Robespierre both applaud Agard for his work in catching aristocrats. In The Tangled Thread, Volume 10 of the Morlin Dynasty, a series of historical novels by author Cynthia Harold Eagles, the character Henri Marie Fysame Stewart, bastard offshoot of the fictional Morland family, allies himself with Danton in an attempt to protect his family as the storm clouds of revolution gather over France. Rock band Sniff and the Tears assert that Danton's cause fell to the French popular desire for empire in their song Looking for You. Danton was a pivotal character in In Search of Honor, a historical fiction written by Donald Lynn Hess. He directly influences many of the fictional protagonist's actions for the worse. See also, James Bartholomew Blackall a Euro 18th and 19th century revolutionary soldier. References Further reading, Furet, Frenet Section 1 and Mona Zouf, eds. A Critical Dictionary of the French Revolution, PPA 213 a Euro 223, Hampson, Norman. Danton, Laude. David. Danton Excerpt and Text Search, External Links, Works by Georges Danton at Project Gutenberg, at this article incorporates text from a publication now in the public domain, a Chisholm, Hugh, Ed Danton, George Jacques. Encyclopedia Britannica. Cambridge University Press A.